All right, everyone, welcome back. So, as you can see, our shaft crate over here is now uncovered. Just moved a bunch of junk to the back there. Bunch of blocks and wedges and this and that. Took a whole pile of them in here, just kind of cleaning up this clutter. Uh, we got a schedule for the grid here tomorrow night. We got to go on the grid, so um, it's just right over here, uh, about 60 feet away. So short trip. We're gonna either push a, push the vessel over with uh, the fishtail or our skiff. Don't yep. know which one yet, but one or the other. Um, we're still not mobile yet because obviously the shaft is right here in a crate. So yep. So that's the first step to getting um, the rest of our propulsion system, the running gear, uh, finished up. Is we need to get on the grid. We're gonna drop the prop, and we're gonna pull this tail shaft. So we'll get this positioned where it originally was. We've got some measurements, and we know how far the end was from uh, the stuffing box. We're gonna get it positioned where it was, and. Then we'll measure our new shaft and mark it on this tail shaft because it's a little bit longer than the original one was. We can pull it out, get the overall dimensions and send those off to the folks down in Seattle and they'll cut us a new prop shaft, uh, broach the keyway for the coupling and get that all put on there and also uh, the, the taper for the prop. So we'll cut the the threads for the nut and everything for that. So pretty big job, excited to get that done. Yeah, that'll be exciting. Yeah. Moving forward. Step in the right direction. Yep. We have to have all that stuff in place so we can actually get this shaft alley covered up. Right now that's uh, what we're waiting on. All right, everyone, a little night op here. Moving the fishtail over alongside Emerald Dial here to move ourselves over onto the grid and power the fishtail. So they're just pulling alongside here. I'm gonna pass some lines through the scupper and tie it off. Let me know how much room we got on the bow up there. Okay. 
That looks like uh, five feet. At six feet. You're about 45 to the dock now. Yeah, we'll probably just have to get like the bow on and kind of line it. Line back a little bit. Okay. Got you're about 45 to the grid now. Oh, that's working on. Yeah, there you go. That's looking good. Now you're about 45 again. I think if you just kick the tail in. First time we've had the big boat on the grid. That's over here, blasting off the little bit of scuzz that we picked up. Yeah, it's quite even. Yeah. <laughs> a little noisy down here with the pressure washers going, but oh, our task today is just to get the bottom cleaned off and uh, hopefully get this propeller off too. So we'll see how that goes. Got some tools and we're hoping we can get that off easy. Sea of articles, not too bad, huh? No, not bad. Yeah, a little bit of marine growth, some articles. A little this and that. Yeah, so. We're going to start by taking off this sacrificial zinc right here. Then we can get to our prop nut. And, uh, and then we'll slide this back a little bit and get our prop puller in behind here. And hopefully we can get her popped off on that. Yeah. Hopefully it comes easy. Yeah, it's a really nice day here. Sunny skies in Kodiak for a while, so guess we'll give you a quick walk around here. <laughs> All right, got the whole crew here, so so this is a keel cooler for the main. It's also got some sacrificial links on it. Uh, this is an intake for uh, one of the suction lines. This goes to a, a pump. Got a transducer here on a fairing block. And 
going back around the other side another transducer and another keel cooler for the gen set looks like this one needs a new zinc on it looks like it just fell off the rest of the way so we'll be replacing that it's got a tiny bit left but not much other zinc looks good on it so that's good got a couple clamped on there so yeah that's what she looks like out of the water a lot deeper than the fishtail all right gotta look busy i think the boss just showed up so let's go check in Hey, hey. Uh oh, boss here. <laughs> <laughs> Cleaned up, get some new zinc on. <laughs> yeah. Well. Not too much growth on the bottom, huh? Yeah, not too bad. Let's see if we can bust this thing off. backing out but that probably don't matter none yeah it doesn't matter.
Yeah. So this is the main nut and this is just a jam nut to keep it from spinning off. Um, I don't know if this has got a cotter pin in it yet. I usually do when they get bigger. Find out in a minute here. Looks like it. Looks like it did, but it doesn't. Got space for one. See if we can bust these things loose, huh? I don't think people heard what you said, hun. Oh, I said I'll go get a stick of wood and we'll see if we can bust this thing loose. Ah. Keep it from spinning? Yeah. You got something in the truck or is it down here? I got something in the truck. pretty good but just a couple little dings and chowder spots I'll make sure we don't gall this nut on here or we will be pulling this rudder off and that is our whole goal of being on the grid is to not have to do that was that like that or did, did that just happen no it was like that I was careful right there That looks pretty good anyways, huh? Yep. Okay, well, let's see. Let's just stick that hunk of wood in there. Um, yeah, that's probably a good spot. Maybe. Hopefully don't slip out. Probably will. Um, might have to try down here and it's got a wedge in.
crap. There's wrenches over there. Um, I think. Which one? Uh, let's see. Looks like pipe wrench. Pipe wrench for that one? Do you want, do you want Tita to hold the block of wood? You're going to have to be on the side, Matt. Yeah. That and I'll get on the other side. Yeah, just hold this right here. Keep your hands away from that blade. Mm -hmm. so, um, steady it and a little, little prop will bite into it. Am I in your way, Hen? Nope. from that splash zone on there. A little crunch. Yep. All right, just twist it off. There you go. Just back it off, or uh, tighten it, it up again. again and mm -hmm. Open mm -hmm. that wire brush, there you go. Or something for that. I think or, yeah. I think it's so just crusties. Pretty sure it's just crusties. I'm breaking away. Super hand. <laughs> I got a 16th out of it. No, I didn't. I'm lying. Did you ask him to say hey, wire brush? You happen to have this in this? <laughs> I did. <Nice. laughs> He's like, yeah, I got a big huge pipe wrench. I'll bring it in the morning. Oh, you asked him last night. That's good. Yeah. That was good thinking. All right. That was a climactic. I know, right? <laughs> I feel like it should be torqued to like, I don't know, a couple hundred foot pounds or something. Yeah. Is that? Oh, that's the keyway, huh? I don't know. Those threads look like not good. Yeah, that might be some damage in there, huh? That might be electrolysis for sure. Watch your eyeballs. Uh, no, nah, it's just a key way oh, cut okay. into it, but... Gotcha. Yeah, at any rate. Good, because I was like, oh, wow. What, what is coming off, you guys? Is that, that I think that's out? some never sees. Yep. What's coming off? Yeah, is all that coming out? That's a shaft? Yeah, so we'll get the prop puller on it and push that back hopefully uh -huh. and then uh, the prop puller is right here I know it'll probably just like rattle right off and I went through all that trouble to make that thing um, yeah and then we'll uh... ooh, ooh. what are you doing is that where it was huh so we got to get 
We got to get a mark on the inside before we do anything. How you gonna to, to measure its old stopping point. Yeah. Right. Well, we measured off the bulkhead. That was just sliding off of there, that prop, or the whole the shaft whole was shaft. just... Shaft was, yeah. It, it slides pretty easy in that tube. So, um... That right there. Yeah. So I guess it doesn't really matter, but we do need to get that part uh, figured out here. Mm -hmm. so I need to go get some oil for that thing. Okay. I guess in the meantime, we can yeah, yeah. clean up the camera gear, everything that we don't want to get wet, and uh, we'll go from there. I don't think that we need to... Well, the wheel's going to stay off regardless. Um, yeah. Maybe have T start pressure wash and show them, you know, how close to get to the fiberglass. And right here, Matt, on these sides, uh -huh. is it, there should be a set screw, it looks like. Yeah. There's a little okay. hole there. Maybe find a pick or something and see if you can dig that out so we can get in there and take a look. Okay. I'll go get some oil for that thing and put it together. All right. So this is a, the, the stern tube for the uh, the shaft that goes through, and inside there, there's a it's called a cutlass bearing. It's a, a bronze tube with a rubber lining. It's got some grooves cut in it to allow water to pass through it. And if you look right here, you can actually see the shaft inside that hole. So there's a hole on each side, and that's to allow water to come through here and come back along the cutlass bearing and that lubricates the shaft, mm -hmm. keeps the rubber from burning up, keeps it cool. So in order to pull the shaft here and keep it out, we're gonna have to plug these two holes and then plug the one that the shaft goes through. So we'll see how that goes. We'll see where we get here. Yep. And then if we do that, we'll just take a, a stub of our old shaft and we'll leave it on the inside where the packing, shaft packing gland is, the stuffing box. And we'll just leave that tight. Once the tide comes up, we can loosen that up a little bit. If we got water pouring out of it, then we know that our job here wasn't sufficient to keep the ocean from coming in. And we'll just tighten up the, the stuffing box on the inside again and wait for low tide. and figure out a different course of action on that. over here pressure washing stuff's coming off easy new bottom paint
beautiful spring day here in Kodiak. Very nice day to be on the grid. Here's Tristan blasting away, making quick work of that algae. Too worried about the scum line at the moment because we're going to get back on the grid anyway. Primary goal today is to get the shaft pulled in the back and to fresh wash the hole. Get the grime off of it, all the growth. Looks like this stuff's a little tougher. Huh? Looks like this stuff's a little tougher on the outside. Got more sunshine on it. There's the keel cooler. All those things look to be in pretty decent shape. Only this one is really cute to shout on, but we're gonna be coming back on the grid anyway, so we'll just worry about that next time. Water's starting to come in. The tide waits for no man. Bring you guys back once we're uh, starting on the prop. 
Got a little evening tide action going on here. Um, still going out here for another hour, I guess. It's not gonna drop too much more, so I had to bust out the old waders. Yeah, we're hoping to uh, get this prop off this evening and uh, also get the shaft pulled. Our plan is just to remove this big uh, bracket, I guess. Plan is to remove that and then just plate over it, seal it up good. That'll uh, cut off the water flow into the boat and we can get the stuff in there finished up that we need to. So we were hoping to get this done this morning on the bigger tide, but uh, we were waiting for some bolts to come in. And uh, luckily they got here this morning. We got a hold of the UPS driver and uh, now we can continue on. So this is part of our prop puller here. We've got a couple of components. Um, By the way, if you didn't know or didn't guess correctly, this is a prop puller that we built in the last video. Yeah, and if you didn't see the video that we made it, follow the link below. So <laughs> this is part of it. This is the part that drops in around the shaft. Got four long bolts that go through. So this will be right here. Four long bolts go right between the flutes. And we've got another big plate over there behind Matt. And the bolts go into that, and then there's a hydraulic ram that's attached to that and presses against the end of the shaft here. You apply some force, it's pulling. Well, I should say it's kind of like pressing against the shaft in the back of the hub on the propeller. Um, that's a 15 ton cylinder right there. We do have a pressure gauge on it so we can try to avoid a massive catastrophe by pumping too much pressure into that thing. And uh, hopefully she slides off. Sometimes they can be stubborn. Sometimes a good blow with a hammer will cause some harmonic vibration and make them pop off. Other times you gotta hit them with some heat. We're prepared for all eventualities, I guess. Yep. And fingers crossed, this goes good. So um, first thing, I'm just gonna get some quick dimensions here and then we'll start bolting this thing up and see what happens. So we just have a piece of quarter inch aluminum plate. We're gonna remove this. It's got a cutlass bearing in it. It's pressed in. Um, usually they have set screws in here, but we don't see any. So it's either seized in there or it was pressed in most likely. Might have been turned down a larger size and pressed in. So we need to get this off. That's just gonna make it easier to seal this off so we can get the work done inside the shaft alley that we need to finish up on. So pretty simple, nothing real fancy here. I'm just gonna get this bolt pattern. Nine and three quarters looks good. So let's go with three and three quarter and nine and three quarters okay earlier today we we set the depth right here or the the spacing that we want on this it was just right around maybe an inch and a quarter right around an inch so we made it just big enough for this plate to slide in and then <clears throat> we uh put a, a piece of tape on the shaft and we measured the distance from the back of the reduction gear or the engine um, the length of the new shaft that we had made and we put a mark on that piece of tape and that is going to be the length of this new shaft that we have cut and couplings made for it so so that's all ready to go do not let that drop into the water otherwise you'll be bumming <laughs> you have wet arms Yeah, it's okay till you turn your back. <laughs> and figure out how to finagle all this stuff alone. I could probably just reach over to that bent. Yes, yeah, so we're wondering that. Uh, I'll have chest waders, so we have some extra that. tufts. <laughs> I think you're all right. I'll take that plate. Okay. So I should just be able to put the rim in afterwards. Remember, and the set outside. That's true, that's very true. Okay, so 
here's our big plate. This is gonna bear, <clears throat> well, these two holes right here are to hold our hydraulic cylinder in place and then that'll bear against the end of the shaft. just enough room for these bolts to go in between these flukes. <clears throat> the pressure is on. point these are all captured and we're good to go one more Just bring it out as a unit, probably. <clears throat> okay, so we'll just adjust these after we get our our ram in place. But it'll just go right here. There's two bolts to retain it, so it doesn't dive into the water. And then it'll press against this right here. And. We will crank it up and so, yeah, so this, this ram is a 15 ton ram or cylinder, but our gauge is only, oh, uh, what is it? It's 10,000 PSI. And so it's got graduations for tonnage, but that's actually not correct for this one. Um, this is for a 10 ton. So actually for every ton I put on here, it's gonna be, or for every increment of the one ton increment right here, it's gonna be a ton and a half, so two is gonna be three tons, so it's not gonna take a whole lot of pressure. I mean, we don't definitely don't wanna jack that thing up to 15 tons, that's for sure. Looking good. That does look good. Yeah. I hope it does what it's supposed to do. All right. Well, how are we going to capture this epic moment? Epic and either it's going to fail or it's going to be epic. <laughs> right? Right. No, don't tighten them too much. 
and it'll end up just pulling them off with the bolts. <laughs> that is a possibility. <laughs> I have to be honest though, I would be a little bit... I'd be disappointed, man. Disappointed that <laughs> all this nice work that we put into this, you're right, that's it. I'm not tightening it anymore. <laughs> that would be horrible. Feel it. Yeah. Some resistance. Centering it on the bolt or on the shaft, I mean. Somewhat, yeah. Uh -huh. I'd say earbud or headphone warnings are in order because when this baby goes off, she's gonna go off. I'm kind of attempting just to like cushion the blow a little bit with this line. Whether that's going to do anything or not, who's to say? Yeah, it should do something, I reckon. Yeah, and then I'll just throw this back up here, huh? Mm-hmm. Tank Looks things good. Up. What's life without a good tangle up? Uh-huh. So usually the idea here is you put a couple tons of pressure on this a ton or so and then we'll whack it with the hammer we gonna put some headphones on i'd suggest taking yours off and um we'll see what happens usually a harmonic vibration will help rattle it off that taper so the shaft is tapered where the prop hub is and that helps seat it on there much like a Morse taper, taper would have like on a on a milling machine or a, a lathe or something like that. So um, yeah, we'll see what happens here. Here's the big main plate. Got a groove in it here so you can drop it down onto the shaft. These are all three quarter inch high strength bolts. They're grade eight. So I think there's something like a hundred thousand pounds each. Uh, of working strength maybe the tensile strength is a little bit lower i'm not exactly sure but it's pretty high so they're not going to be an issue uh 15 ton ram 10,000 psi and uh really that's it these are all one inch plate just went overkill got these off of ebay i think they were like oh i want to say it was like 80 bucks for two of them with shipping so the difference between three quarter and one inch was about five bucks. I don't think it changed the shipping any. So it's always nice to just uh, kind of build things a little heavy, a little overkill. Then when they don't fail on you, you're happy. Mm -hmm. So one ton on this gauge the one ton mark on this gauge is going to be 1500 pounds because like i said that's a 15 ton cylinder but this gauge is for a 10 ton cylinder um they don't make them for the 15 so you just gotta do some math i guess there it goes gaining pressure yeah I guess oh wow, it goes up fast, huh? Yeah, so the it's a two-stage pump, so the first one will stroke fast to get your ram out, and then once it hits a certain threshold, it's uh, s smaller squirts of, of fluid, but higher pressure. Mm -hmm. um, I'll come over How much pressure is that? That is... Ton and a half on that, so like not quite three thousand, but yeah, a little over, a little over a ton, a little over three thousand. 
pressure changed a little bit. Oh, did it? Yeah. It dropped? It did. Oh, that's good then. Yep. Might have popped it loose. No change that time. Might have come down uh, 500 PSI. I don't know what you ended at. Yeah, was it like... In between? Yeah. Yeah, get the heat. I was hoping this would come off easier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Molten line. It's like the line hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, that did drop. Yeah, it did drop. It dropped like a couple thousand every uh, tap you did there for a second. <laughs> Just gonna burn all that line. Good grief. I just dropped it. Oh. oh, there it goes. All right. I was going to say, that just dropped it a thousand. <laughs> All right, well, good thing we had the porta power, I think. Yeah. That would have been pretty much impossible without it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I put too many dings on the side of the wheel. A few. Don't buff out. Cool. Yeah, man. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, there it is. Okay. <laughs> Success is ours, man. Yeah. Success is ours. Just like that, huh? Yep. 
That was uh, that that happened fast because I saw it like probably 200 psi uh -huh. when you hit it like the last three times, and then all of a sudden it's like a thousand, and it's like oh there it goes. <laughs> and I'm just like I I think I totally missed it. Did he catch it on camera? Oh yeah, I got it. Sweet, yeah. Although I might have like jumped slightly, so I think I tipped the camera a bit, but <laughs> it wasn't as horrible as I expected it. We brought this one up to uh, 6,000 psi, so um, 9k, about nine, mm -hmm. yeah, somewhere right in that area. That's no small amount of pressure. It's substantial, yeah. yeah. That makes me nervous. Pressure. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that we went heavy with everything now, because yeah. just like. Good to have that extra head space. Yep. You start stretching bolts and breaking them off, then it's just like, what do you do? Yeah. Nothing. You're tonight. doomed. <laughs> you go home. Yep. Because everything's closed. Go look around for someone else's tomorrow and break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we ordered those bolts on Friday. The guys got them out that day, like they said, and uh, they made their way up to Alaska and they were here this morning and called the UPS guy and he uh, they usually deliver to the homes like our house last late in the evening and uh, and so we just gave him a ring and uh, met him downtown and then uh, went and got some bolts or uh, excuse me some nuts and washers and we were good to go we found all this up the last couple of days Took a little while. Um, one mistake, drilled the holes wrong. Uh, I made the, the holes for this the same orientation as the bolts, and so of course the, the port was blocked by the bolt. So you'll <laughs> see it in the video. Quick fix, nice to have a welder. Yeah. Well, that was pretty awesome. That's really awesome, I'm happy. Yeah, I'm glad it came off in the end, because it's like, okay, <laughs> getting up there now. Yeah, I wonder what temp it was. Be nice to have like an infrared thermometer. Yeah, I need find to get out. One actually, I've been meaning to buy one. It probably wasn't too hot because a lot of mass there, but it's like it's warm to the touch. Uh huh. So if maybe like little, if it was a little bit hotter, it it start to burn. But yeah. That's like a nice hand warmer. Okay, so you know, it doesn't take much. Probably like a hundred. 50 degrees there or something. Yeah. When it came for off. One, for one inch of steel, every hundred degrees expands it by, I think, a foul. So, um, a lot of times it doesn't take a whole lot in order to to achieve what you're looking for. Yeah. 